We have a satellite on the surface of the Earth. We can assume it's initially stationary, and the goal is to get it into a stable orbit at a height of r above the surface of the Earth. In other words, the radius of the orbit would be two times the radius of the Earth. And once we get it into that stable stationary orbit, we want to calculate how much work is required. So we know the basic definition of work is force times distance. But because the force varies, it gets weaker and weaker as you get further and further away from the Earth, because the force of gravity gets weaker and weaker. We don't want to use this equation without any kind of uh, calculus. So we want to use the more basic equation for work. Work is change in energy. So all we need is final and initial energies. So it's E final, my total energy final, minus my total energy initial. And all we have to do is itemize. Well, we know the initial energy was just potential. We're a certain distance away from the center of the Earth. In fact, we're a radius of the Earth away. So we definitely have potential energy at the surface of the Earth. And when it's in orbit, it's in motion. So we have kinetic energy and a new potential energy because our distance has changed. So our equation will look like this. My work will be my final energy consists of kinetic due to its orbit plus potential. And my initial energy is just potential. So once we calculate that, we're good to go. Now I'm going to skip a lot of the calculations here and just focus on the concepts because the calculations are challenging and I want to show you ways to make them simpler for you. So when we write this equation, what does it look like? Work equals one half. Now M is the mass that's in motion. So I'm going to call the mass of the satellite little m and I'm going to call the mass of the Earth big M. So it's going to be one half little m v squared plus, now we know that potential energy is negative, negative g little m big M over the separation between the two, which when we're at the final position is 2r. So those two combined make my final energy, kinetic and potential, and my initial energy is negative g, m, m, and the distance there is just r. So there's my basic equation. Now, we have everything. We know the mass of the satellite, mass of the Earth. We know the radius of the Earth. The only thing we don't have is this velocity. Well, we know it's an orbit. So we've got to switch gears and do circular motion. So for orbiting objects, we know that my net force is solely provided by the force of gravity for an object in an orbit. So net force will be my centripetal force. So instead of writing ma, we're going to write it as m v squared over r. And that's going to be equivalent to g m m over r squared. Now I have to be careful here with this little r. Notice I haven't written it in terms of capital R yet. Little r on this side of the equation is the radius of the orbit, which is 2r. So this is mv squared over 2r. And on this side, this r represents the distance between the two masses. Remember, this is our force of gravity equation, and r represents the separation between the two masses. Well, when I'm at my final location, the separation from the center of the satellite to the center of the Earth is still 2r. So the right-hand side will be gmm over 2r, all squared. Now we can simplify it a little bit. Masses cancel. The moving mass cancels. And 2r cancels with one of the 2r's on the other side. And I end up with an expression that says v squared is gm over 2r. Now I'm going to simply plug this in where I see v squared in my original equation. So my work equation, I'll call it equation 1, I'll do it over here, becomes the following. W equals 1 half m, little m, and v squared we're going to plug in gm over 2r. So I'll put it in blue just to remind us that it was a substitution. 
plus, now it's actually minus, right? Plus a negative, why don't we just do negative? Minus GMM over 2R. And then minus a negative becomes a plus GMM over R. Now inside the brackets, you'll notice I have one half GMM over 2R, right? I can move this little yellow M anywhere I like. And minus GMM over 2R. So I have a common factor here of GMM over 2R. In other words, you can think of this bracketed term as one half X, if I say GMM over 2R is all one thing, X. So one half X minus X, which is negative one half GMM all over 2R. That's what all the brackets simplify to. Now you guys should confirm that. Plus GMM over R. Now and again, I wanna use my algebra and make this as simple as possible. I can factor out a GMM over R out of both expressions and end up with the following. So when I factor out a GMM over R, the first term becomes negative one quarter, right? Because I've still got the half and I've got the two in here. So it becomes negative one quarter. And the second term simply becomes one. Now, negative one quarter plus one is three quarters. So my overall answer becomes three quarters of G M M over R. And when you fill in all the values where you know the masses of the earth and the satellite and the radius of the earth, you should end up getting 2.344 times 10 to the 10 joules of work is necessary to take that satellite from the surface of the earth to a stable orbit, a distance 2R away.